Good afternoon, viewers. Again, Julius Matovo here. Um, I'm presenting this program from the Netherlands, and uh, I'm representing Puffy. Um, this ch the channel is meant to educate farmers on how to go organic. As I said uh, before, earlier in the previous program, that this platform is an organic platform, organic farming platform, and it's aimed at inspiring farmers, already people who are in farming and those who are aspire to be farmers, to go organic. For one reason that organic farming is the way we see that the environment can be uh, uh, saved and also if the environment is saved, then we are assured of uh, uh, healthy food and um, um, life to be a normal life. Uh, not expecting to eat things which are contaminated with chemicals and stuff like that. So pure organic farming inputs, as we said, is aimed at doing that, educating farmers through our online channel, uh, through our um, TV, through our social media platforms, and um, also in our WhatsApp groups. We also have associates around the world, uh, but most especially in Africa, we have in Uganda, Zambia, we aspiring to get also in Malawi, Botswana, all those countries in Uganda, in uh, Africa, sorry. Um, today, we're going to tackle one biggest challenge that we have uh, from our platform. A lot of people are talking about it. Uh, we have that um, WhatsApp group, which is really comprising of a lot of members, around 300 and uh, uh, 25 members to be precise so those members uh, are from all over the world we have members from uh, the Netherlands we have members from Uganda Tanzania Zambia Malawi Botswana Zimbabwe uh, a lot of countries even South Sudan Sudan itself they're all in that group but there is one biggest problem and this biggest problem is about a dangerous pest that is giving people a headache. Uh, it is very hard to control. It is really, really so stubborn. And uh, it is a pest that can destroy an entire field. Maybe, for, for example, for uh, I'll give an example of a hectare. It can destroy a hectare of a project, for example, tomato project, in just less than a week. So that's how devastating this pest is. And this pest is called tuta absoluta it's really a small fly and how uh, this whole thing manages to destroy the whole entire um, entire field is quite astonishing so uh, today we have decided to engage one farmer uh, who is also under the group we talked about the whatsapp group um, he's also following us on our Facebook page, uh, on our Facebook page and also other um, social media platforms. He's following us. Everything we do, he follows us. Uh, he's actually one of those people Puffy has inspired to go into farming. So today we are holding um, an interview with Mr. Sekelechi, Edwin Sekelechi from uh, Solwezi, Zambia. So, um, before even I proceed, I want to give you a brief, uh, a brief background about uh, uh, this pest. This pest is a moth. It comes from a, a moth, uh, a moth uh, family. It's, uh, it's really small, black in color, and its origin is in Peru. That is South America. So, from Peru, it's spread all over Latin America, and then... Uh, uh, in, sh in a short time span, it found itself in uh, Africa. And it, you can find it in East Africa, you can find it in Zimbabwe, Zambia, wherever tomatoes are grown in large scale. So it is a very disastrous pest. Uh, as you see in a, in a clip which our farmer sent us, that is how disastrous this thing is. It can destroy an entire field. We are going to hear from him directly and he tells us his story is going to tell us uh, a lot about why he entered uh, farming in the first place and also uh, what challenges he faces and things like that. So we want to hear from Mr. Sekelechi and I'm going to, to 
put him online uh, just to uh, see that um, he gives us his story. So you would bear with us and uh, we see from him. So uh, we are trying to reach him and see if he's available. Yeah, so as we wait for him, okay, he's online already. Hello, Mr. Sekelechi Edwina, where you are live on air uh, on Puffy TV, yes, and uh, we are very glad to, to hear from you. First and foremost, we would like to thank you so much for being patient with us, and uh, okay. we are really, really so interested in knowing your journey uh, into farming and what challenges you faced. Uh, we are really so eager to hear from you and also other viewers to, to hear your story. Thank you, good afternoon, and uh, good afternoon to Pofi Admin and everyone at Pofi. I also want to extend my greetings to all the listeners and uh, the viewers uh, across the globe. Oh, that is very good, Mr. Sekalechi. That is very good. So, uh, where are you from, uh, Mr. Sekalechi? We would like to know exactly where you're from uh, in Zambia. Ah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm from Zambia. Zambia is in uh, southern uh, Central Africa. And uh, in Zambia, I live in a province called Northwestern Province. The provincial capital is Solwezi. So, in short, I'm in Solwezi, Solwezi, Zambia. Oh, that's very good. I'm, I'm told that Solwezi is one of the most influential and agricultural areas in uh, Zambia. Is it correct, uh, Mr. S uh, Sekelechi? Yes, please. Actually, Northwestern Province and Solwezi in particular, it is uh, one of the provinces which is very blessed with a lot of rains, mm -hmm. very good uh, virgin arable land for agriculture. We grow a lot of maize in this part of Zambia. Mm. And uh, as of late, we have seen an increase in people getting into tomato production mm. and, of course, beans and uh, Irish potatoes. Okay. That is very interesting. I'm really so eager to know uh, a lot of things from you, Mr. Sekalechi. And uh, why? Why of all things? Because you talked about maize as being one of the largest, uh, uh, largely produced crop in, uh, in that area. What took you into tomato farming? What really inspired you into this whole game of tomato farming? <laughs> um, it's a very interesting. And uh, uh, you see, we get inspired by things that surround us. Mm. And uh, one thing, when you look at tomato, tomato has, uh, is an edible fruit, mm. which has a high nutritive value. Mm. And uh, tomato itself, every home mm. cannot prepare relish without tomato. Mm. They cannot prepare any salad without the use of tomato. So mm. you find that tomato is a, a home friend. And because it is a home friend, when it is, comes to food preparation, it tells you that it has a ready market. Mm. So... For instance, a, a, a household of uh, a five, you mm. will find that per day they would consume close to 15 tomatoes, wow. you know. Yeah. So because of that, it, it opened my eyes to say, oh, this uh, crop, mm. if I get involved, I will be adding the numbers to those that are already in production. And secondly, when you look at Solwezi, mm. it is a, a new copper belt of Zambia. Oh. We have three huge mines that have come up in a, in northwestern province. Yeah. So these copper mines are so big, which have contributed to increase the population. Mm. And then this population, they need to eat. Mm. But we have less people getting involved into tomato production because uh, people complain, no, tomato has got a lot of work. But I didn't want to look at that aspect. I looked at the aspect of, we have so many people. Now, if we don't have many people getting into production, how will these people 
meet the demands of the body mm. of that nutritive value that comes from tomato. Mm. And of course, the last part is if I get to do it properly, I get an income to work for myself and employ myself and look after my family. That is what inspired me. Wow. What an inspirational story. I think a lot of people who will hear this will be so swept with your story because at first uh, we would be very straightforward. You're one of those motivating people that we've seen on the platform, even in our WhatsApp group itself, uh, also on Facebook. We've always uh, talked about your story and how inspiring it is because as I think rem I remember with uh, conversation with you, uh, you said that it was your very first time to grow tomatoes and you started it right away um, So to us your, your, your story is quite um, Unique that's why we, we, we really even took this initiative to to broadcast you on air to tell us so mr. Uh, mr. Sekulich, what what challenges? Uh, did you face with this uh, with this new inspirational uh, uh, activity what uh, if you're still in this project um, what challenges are you facing that other yes, people um, want to go into farming uh, this crop uh, know before even they start at, uh, before we even talk about the challenges mm. first of all the other part which I felt I, I forgot to mention mm. the inspiration mm. is the variety the freedom F1 mm. That variety did inspire me a lot mm. because I saw mm. how vigorous it grows, mm. how it multiplies, how it bears the fruit, mm. and I was like, wow, mm. if you just planted this variety, this mm. is how it can perform. I don't want to mention other varieties mm. which I've seen with a short lifespan, mm. but the lifespan of Freedom F1 and the time it continues to give you the fruit if properly managed without any calamities, mm. that was so inspiring. Wow. And coming mm. to your second question, what challenges mm. uh, I have faced? Mm. Uh, like in a, every situation, farming is a business. Yeah. And because it is a business, it is demanding in terms of input resources mm. so uh, one of the challenges is to get the material requirement mm. to meet the growth characteristic of uh, tomato which is freedom f1 mm. you need twine you need wires mm. and you need uh, core materials yeah. uh, because you need to utilize it mm. and then in addition to that you need to have adequate water supply mm. and irrigation facilities mm. so this becomes a, a challenge if you do not have enough money to put together all this required this resource material then it becomes an obstacle to tomato production mm. the other challenge Mm. which I found is, of course, as an individual alone, mm. you cannot meet all the daily uh, needs to take care of the field. Because when you prepare your field, you need to dig trenches. You need uh, chicken manure or well-composed manure. You mm. need to treat the soil. And um, all this work, as an individual alone, you cannot do it. So you need people to help you. Now, those people, extra hands to help you, mm. you need to pay them. Yeah. Yes, whether it's going to be family labor, but you still have to incur a certain cost. Mm. And um, so one aspect which I discovered, uh, the challenge which I discovered, is the putting together the resource uh, material to make sure that you have a clean field, you have uh, the irrigation equipment, mm. you have... Uh, the, 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 the other requirements that needed that are needed mm. and also knowledge mm. information of how to do it properly mm. the labor that you get to involve mm. some of them they have never grown tomato before like all the experience I had mm. and to get uh, these uh, family members from the other part of uh, the village in the, the town 
in mm. the village from my home village mm. and then it was the first time they were going to grow mm. tomato mm. so they thought they were handling a crop like maize which is not so demanding yeah. and uh, when the crop got almost ready they mm. became so excited because now they could all they were looking at is money yeah they started stealing mm. you see yeah. they started stealing without me uh, knowing they started selling and because tomato requires that you spray mm. the, the insect pest to to control uh absolute tuta to yeah. control other white flies and other pests that can bring the diseases mm. so these boys did not understand that that is the key mm. their interest was simply to 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 get tomatoes and sell and mm. then they stopped spraying the chemicals mm. unfortunately i could not monitor this part because i had received a funeral uh, i lost a sister in the family and i traveled out of town yeah. so i was away for one week and during that time that was the critical time when the tomato had just uh, started getting red and that i slept on that one and boom i was affected oh. when i came back i could see i could observe mm. some things that the things were not right and before i could start putting patches here talking to these boys again i lost a brother uh, an in-law mm. my niece lost the husband mm. again because i'm a senior member in the family my, mm. my presence was needed there you know the african setup yeah so again i had to go there until mm. someone told me to say we have caught the boys are selling tomato so those are some of the things that uh, when it came to i was using again um uh, a water pump it was a small water pump mm. and the field was quite big to be uh, supplied by using that water pump mm. the petrol is expensive and i was spending 20 liters of petrol per week wow. which somehow was not enough mm. so and then i did not have enough money to meet that mm. so that also became a, a challenge because these boys they are in the local area where my farm is there are people with a lot of motorbikes what i didn't know was that they were stealing fuel and selling to those guys who have motorbikes oh that is very <laughs> now now i'm i'm seeing the whole how the whole thing pans out to be quite challenging and uh still i would applaud you for your charisma to stick on but um, these are all challenges. I don't know if uh, I've cut you short, but there is something that you've talked about that really has taken my my uh, uh, attention, and that is Tuta Absoluta, because other factors, other challenges, you would have immediate control over them. But with the problem of Tuta Absoluta, you had to prepare in time and... Uh, maybe that's where uh maybe the whole thing uh, crumbled down so um we would like to know much about what this tutor absoluta can do because you are this you are this uh person who suffered the consequences of uh, this pest so please would you try to a little bit elaborate on uh on on this sir uh, we are interested yes. to know. Mm. Uh, th yes, this tuta is a very, very vicious, small insect looking like it's a butterfly with a very ugly mm. appearance. Mm. And uh, it hides, it can hide even in the soil, and especially the area where I, where I was, where mm. I am, mm. uh, there is a river which is running mm. nearby, mm. and then the whole vegetation is bent. Mm. So when the burning of the bush is happening, mm. it, it goes to height in, in, in near the green vegetation which is along the river banks. Mm. And in the night, it comes out. So immediately it has access to the field, the only green field around, mm. which is the tomato field. There is no any other vegetation vegetation around because the trees are so high so the only accessible vegetation in mm. that area is the tomato 
Mm. So, and um, it attacks early in the morning. Mm. And in the, the daytime, you find that it has disappeared. So, meaning, uh, if you don't spray, mm. uh, the total absolute uh, remedy or uh, insecticide, like the one I saw, which you are using uh, with the, this uh, Nemo, Nemo tree, whatever it is, the production. Oh, yeah. One, you which you mean the Oikos, the, the Oikos product? Actually, uh, we're yes. trying to we're trying to uh, uh, talk to the company here in the Netherlands that uh, sells that uh, that product. However, we have a challenge of the price because some of the companies have strict rules that uh, if this product is not going to be used in the Netherlands, then we cannot uh, send it outside. It's uh, usually strictly to be used here. But some other com companies are liberal a bit, and also you will look at uh, the way it's. Uh, exported uh, companies like dhl uh, consider this product as a dangerous uh, uh, as a hazardous uh, product i don't know why they come they take it like that but it's organic in nature because it's made from the name tree uh, but yeah to, to 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 be precise we are still uh, trying to find other remedies to this uh, pest so maybe in the platform we shall be discussing about this but already we, we indicated it in, a, in the group that it's quite expensive right now because of the ongoing war in Ukraine. Uh, a lot of stock is limited and most farmers now, they are looking only to maintaining this supply for only Netherlands. So we are, we are quite ch challenged with this, but we, uh, we believe that at, uh, at the end of the tunnel, there is always a light. We believe that we, ha we will have a solution to it yeah yes because mm. the tutor is the biggest challenge to tomato production mm. yeah i'm not the only one i was told to say actually it attacked uh this part of solwezi even other farmers got affected there is a friend of mine uh, lucky him is growing within town mm. so he has a uh, prepared this F a field and uh, fortunately he had some extra income because he works in the mine so he was able to buy the total treatment mm. because even here in Zambia it is expensive. Just uh, one liter it mm. goes um, around uh, close to 500. Mm. So 500 kwacha. Now mm. if you convert that to the dollar exchange rate, you will see that it is indeed on the higher side. Mm. So now when you are going into this and in my situation where I had limited resources, so mm. it was so difficult for me to to capture this quickly and prepare myself mm. so that I should uh, introduce this uh, thing because I could not see that it was there. The only thing I was seeing were the white uh, flies, white butterflies. Yeah. Most my small fly, white, yes. Mm. Those I could see and each time we spread, we were able to... But... Hello? And all of a sudden, I even knew. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Yes. Uh, Mr. I, Secretary, are you online? Hello? Yeah, can you hear us now? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay, that's very good. Okay. Yes. Now that yeah. Mr. Sekeleshi, um, we've had the challenges and uh, they are quite uh, disturbing. Uh, we All we can tell you is that still you are a winner because you've seen all these challenges and uh, you have solutions to that. Um, we would like to know what kind of uh, how have, how did you manage at least to try to solve these problems? How did you manage to face this challenge? Uh, mm. One thing which I tried to do was immediately try to improve on water supply. I mm. had to look for a solar pump so mm. that I can increase mm. the number of uh, uh, times to to to, to provide water to the plants. Mm. So. Yes, although it, I needed money to buy the solar equipment mm. and uh, the, I managed to get just a small one which was not pumping water at a desirable rate but it was able to fill uh, 3,000 liters mm. that is after some time but that in itself wasn't very enough but that is one thing that I looked at you need to improve 
everything. It should be properly, uh, thoroughly prepared. It should be clean mm. and uh, make sure that uh, you have adequate uh, nutri nutrient mm. uh, material to feed the, the tomato. You oh. cannot start tomato production if you don't have enough manure. So mm. uh, you, you are the organic fertilizer or this other fertilizers that you need to feed the, the tomato. Mm. Mm. So nutrient is feeding to the plant is very, very important. Mm. And then also the daily management to remove the, to clean up the field, the weeds, mm. the nanny tomato materials yeah. in the field. Mm -hmm. The field has to be clean. Mm. And mm. then also you need to, to make sure, I had to make sure that I came up with alternative materials to support the, the tomato because you need to keep it upright. Oh. So that also, yes, we, because that is very, very important. You can't keep it down, it will get affected. So you need to keep it upright. Okay. And uh, in the process, some of the wood uh, materials we are getting along the river banks, that is which I suspect would have uh, carried the eggs for tuta. Oh. So when we put them there, then they hatched in the field. Mm. You know, they, we were using the reeds. So oh. these reeds, to try and uh, use them as a support system. Lines to, to put the tomato together, yes. Okay. So those, I suspect, they came with eggs because I didn't have enough money to buy twine. Twine, oh. Okay. Uh, yes, Mr. Sokolechi, to, to the these are good tips you've given. Uh, these are very good tips. Um, there is one thing I've learned for sure that tuta, uh, for example, if you put tuta out of the equation, you may have a good income. Exactly. Okay. If you can manage to control tuta, yeah. then you are home and dry. Because there's uh, my other friend is uh, somewhere, he has been doing fine. We started almost the same time. The same truck that was coming to pick tomato from my field, they would give me the feedback. First, they told me to say, uh, you are also having water challenge. Even your colleague this side, but your colleague, he managed to get extra, he has two big, uh, he has uh, additional solar pumps, and then he's also using a bigger generator, water pump, a mm. diesel pump. Yeah. So he managed to, inc to improve on that. And then he uh, is he, he, he trading of tomato. He did not use the bush material which I used. Oh. He, he just maintained using the, the twine. Okay. So he was able to, to continue supplying oh. the, the market. So, yes. But so, for me, I only managed to do about 100 boxes and the mm. tomato was already bad. The field, you could see the way you saw how I shared those things. Yeah, we were actually trying to see here uh, one of your harvests you had, what was, which was really so inspiring because we we did share it around on our social media platforms and uh, a lot of people reacted to them. You did indeed inspire a lot of people, not only in Zambia but also beyond Zambia because we're already seeing uh, reactions from uh, Malawi, Botswana, Uganda itself and also some people in Tanzania. They are really reacting to this. Yes. Uh, so, yes. um, so uh, my question is, you mean that if you, for example, next time you go into again uh, tomato farming, you would do exactly these things. Do you think the whole challenges will be sorted? The whole challenge will be sorted because now I've learned that you can't afford not to spend 100% time Mm. monitoring every activity of management mm. yeah. because if only mm. if i did not go to, to attend that funeral the two funerals that period which was so critical because that's the time when the tomato was getting ready mm. meaning the spring would have continued mm. and uh, i would have been monitoring the those boys mm. so once you do micromanagement then you are allowing the problem to come in so you have to avoid micromanagement so okay um you know what i like i i really i i really got impressed about your project because you did employ people you did give people work and that is the this whole concept like we have to increase employment but only that people looked beyond 
that they only they only thought about money and uh, they did not think about what if this whole thing goes down we lose work so yes, you did you your imagine, part i was feeding them every day yeah. i bought them cell phones for the first time they had cell phones in wow. their life which i've never had wow Th that's really so impressive you know i've never i've, I've even uh, myself never thought of like if someone can do that for farmers for uh, people who work on their farms but if you did this it meant that you really loved your project and um as puffy you know we talked about uh being supportive uh we shall uh, communicate to you on how we can be helpful and also uh we would like to stand here on this platform to to uh, to mobilize all those people around the world who would really like to support people like Mr. Sekelechi who are trying to change their communities through farming, through uh, um, uh, uh, growing food or growing um, organic food, uh, please do give your donations. You can always contact us on our uh, communication lines. We've shared our emails and uh, the phone numbers. Mr. Sekel people like Mr. Sekelechi really need, do not really need a lot. They need maybe uh, half of what you could uh, give us. So, for us, we are always happy. We've ho uh, helped through our association, we've helped people by giving them seeds to uh, start up their projects. And Mr. Sekelechi is one of the beneficiaries in the first place who benefited from these seeds. But uh, after him showing us all these results from these seeds, we're even more happy to be helpful to his next project. So anyone who wants to be supportive to Mr. Sekelechi and other people in the communities who are trying to eradicate poverty through creating uh, jobs for, for their communities, we are welcome to, to receive your support. Uh, to, uh, to, because now we are exceeding the time uh, I think you've given, you had uh, promised to give us, we would like to get your conclusive words. What are your conclusive words? What would you uh, recommend to all those people who want to go into farming, specifically uh, tomato farming? What are your key words? My key words is, first of all, is resilience. We need to be determined. We should never give up. Secondly, uh, organizations like uh, POFI mm. should not give up on a starter farmers like us and individuals mm. and the other thing is my appeal to all well wishers like you have said mm. if only i can receive additional support if i manage to employ five people and if i in expanded on the on my works how many people will i be able to reach out there one thing i learned out for during this experience i i was even able to make tomato jam which I only had to do crush the puree and then I use the orange peels, uh, the yellow part, mix it, and and there we are with sugar, and it was pure organic fruit jam. Wow, wow! Yes. This you know this is what we're talking about uh, empowerment and poverty eradication. It does not a lot of people think it's it's really a big thing, but. Poverty eradication is all about creating empowerment to people, educating them, and giving them support on how to handle things uh, to to get out of poverty. But what you're doing, Mr. S uh, Sekelechi, is really nice. We would look forward to helping you uh, through our associate, um, uh, AgriHeads. I think uh, that is Miss Maureen Nyimba. Uh, we would okay. be we would be communicating to you on what we could do and uh, who knows you'll be back on your feet and uh, give us more inspiring stories thank you so much and it's only love through love that such things can come through when you show love like the way madame maureen did she tried me she wanted to test my uh, my desire and i received the seed and immediately i put it to the ground so that I demonstrate that I meant what I wanted to do. Oh, that, that's very nice. 
um, on, based on this, we would like to thank all those people who are doing the great job. Uh, people like uh, Dr. Banda, uh, people like uh, Miss Maureen uh, uh, Nyimba. Um, all of those, we would like to thank people in Uganda, Mr. Suna. Your work is really important in uplifting people's lives. You don't have to do much. You know, we have a saying that you have to clean your corner. If you want to change the world, you have to start from the corner of your house. Uh, Puffy is doing a great job. We're trying to do this. And uh, Mr. Sekelechi is one of those people who come out to give this kind of evidence that Puffy is doing a great job changing their lives. Mr. Sekelechi, we would, uh, uh, unless you have any question or anything to say, we would like to, to release you right now and uh, we continue with the program. Uh, is, is there anything you want to say? As the last word. No, uh, otherwise, just uh, want to appreciate Pofi and Agriheads and uh, people like Dr. Banda who gave me the insight of the actual field preparation. Um, I wouldn't have managed to do what I did if these people did not come through. I mm. want to say thank you to them and I want to say thank you to Pofi and looking forward to any support that may come through so that I can get back to my position right now i'm on that field i've removed all that uh, the tomato which was affected i want to do a rotation put in uh cabbage and mm -hmm. then uh, prepare another field where i should do grow tomato so that i create that cycle break to break the cycle of tutor oh, okay that is very nice uh, mr um uh, mr sekalechi we are happy to host you and we would be happy to host you again in future so much okay have a nice uh, day and nice weekend and goodbye sir goodbye and goodbye to the viewers and listeners okay bye-bye we are really really uh, happy to host mr. Sekelechi uh, we've heard from the horse's mouth uh, you know Puffy started this initiative to uplift people's lives to know what exactly is happening on the ground you know with supporting people you have to be engaged with them so Puffy is doing a great job involving people engaging people from the grassroots and uh, uh, Mr. Sekelech is among those that we have indeed tried to uplift however much having those setbacks uh, Puffy as itself it, it, uh, it is an organic platform which advocates for organic farming so we would uh, we would uh, advise people to have organic solutions to this kind of problem uh, people can use interbred inter inter yeah interbred biocontrol agents uh, for example we have the microbials the biopesticides the micro low uh, yeah um yeah, the integrated pest control management. So all these would be very helpful. You can use vinegar. You can use uh, uh, soda, baking soda solutions to spray on the plants themselves. So you just have to make a solution and uh, uh, you spray on your crops. I think bicarbonate soda is one of the baking sodas that we can use. You can just uh, put it in your palm, uh, spray it in your palm, and spray it all over your field. It's one of the ways this uh, to avoid these kind of insects. So, um, with due respect, as I've always uh, advised, we have products that us as Puffy would recommend people to use if they want to go organic. We have organic plant food, that is a liquid fertilizer, it's a concentrate. It's it's uh, sourced from here in the Netherlands. We have Ecostyle Vital, which is a fungicide, uh, with, which deals with all the fungal problems. It's also a solution, uh, and it's a concentrate as well. A concentrate as well. Uh, we have uh, also um, Ipsomicrotop. Ipsomicrotop is used as a fertilizer. It helps in making the plants greener you know it also helps in uh, 
making the plant resist the pests and stuff like that. So all these products, we source them from here in the Netherlands. They are certified as organic products because uh, we source only organic products to be used, organic inputs to be used in farms. We also do source um, organic seeds, seeds that are uh, have been approved as organic. So we, we, we do have these kind of products. We take them to Africa, we send them to Africa, to those farmers who want them. Uh, we have associates, through those associates we get orders and also sometimes we serve individual people who contact us. So feel free to contact us on those, on those uh, contacts that have been shared uh, below. Uh, we shall be able to contact you. Uh, without any further delay, we would like to stop here for today and uh, we thank you all viewers for having watched this program until where it is right now. Um, until next time, I remain Julius Matovu and representing Poffy Netherlands. We love you. Bye-bye.